Hello Internet, Brandon Bourne here with a tutorial on using a bunch of the cool features unique to Fusion 360 with designs made in other softwares. Featuring a Jeep modeled by a freshman CAD student at the University of Washington in SolidWorks. I'll start by showing you how to easily import your design into Fusion, create an assembly using joints, and then inspect them using a motion study. We'll use Sculpt to directly model an organic chair, render a beautiful image of the design, simulate the impact of a crash on the roll cage, use computer-aided manufacturing on the steering wheel, set up the design for 3D printing, and finally, we'll animate the entire assembly. Let's go ahead and dive right in. You have saved your part as a dot .solid, dot .solid assembly, dot .step, or dot .igis, and you now need to upload it into Fusion. You can use that little blue button in the top left-hand corner and drag and drop the file types in there. It will take most file types. Once you've uploaded, you may need to convert it into a Fusion file. I can then open that design in Fusion, and it comes in, but it doesn't have the design history. That's really the only difference from what I had previously. So if I right click up on the design itself, I can capture the design history. And this is a really important step. I can't emphasize this enough. It is absolutely crucial that you do this. Otherwise, you won't be able to have a timeline. You won't be able to go back and make changes or edit with the steps that you've done. So now you can see at the bottom that uh, it's all come in. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run through an assembly. So I'm going to show you the assembly for the front left tire. And to do that, I will actually go ahead and turn off all of my other components that are cluttering up the view. Once I get everything turned off, the next step is going to be to ground one of the components. And this is essentially telling the software that this is the component that I don't want to move. And it'll help me um, when I'm trying to simulate movement later during a motion study. So, I'm going to go ahead and ground the front base, as you can see here, and then I'm going to go to the assemble drop down and go to joint. So the first type of joint that I want to do is actually a revolute. And I'm going to click on the frame, and then I will click on the part of the base that the frame connects to, and it will show me a quick little animation of what that joint now looks like. So if I'm happy with that, I will click OK, and I will right click, go to the shortcut menu, and go straight up for the last command, which in this case was joint and go do the same thing on the lower frame. And when I'm happy with that, I can come back in and do another joint for the uh, suspension. And it's important to note that it, the first component that you click on always moves to the second component. So if you don't want a component to move, make sure you click on it second. I'm gonna move this around. I can't actually make the suspension work as it should because it's a solid body modeler. So it's fixed, not a dynamic element. And this is true for both Inventor and SolidWorks. Um, so what I'm going to do, I, I actually can't fix the second pin, so I will just kind of put it into that rough position so I know it's there, and then go ahead and switch around and do some of the other joints for the tire. Cool, looks good. So the next thing I need to do is actually a cylindrical joint because this joint needs to not only revolve, but it needs to slide up and down. As you can see from this animation, I need to edit these joint limits to tell it not to go through the part. So what I'm going to do is actually go up into the joints and then edit those limits and switch over to the slider and then set the maximum to be the top of the piece and the minimum to be the bottom. This can take some playing with sometimes. Next up, I need to do a rigid joint to the outside piece, there we go, and then do another revolute from the piece we were working with earlier to uh, this hubcap looking thing. I'll just do the middles, make sure that it revolves, change my offsets, and there we go. So the true test of whether or not I've done a good job is whether or not the piece moves, and there we go. Clearly, I have another joint that I need to edit the limit on, and I think it's actually the revolute on the cylindrical joint we did earlier. So I can set my minimums and my maximums here, so that way I've got a stop and a start piece, and then when I've got, I actually don't want to do rest. So that looks good on the animation, and that looks good overall. So next step is to run a motion study. So I will go into the assemble dropdown and select motion study. I'm just going to run a quick one on this frame's joint here, and I'll say set a few angles and a few time periods, and then when I click play, I can actually watch the thing move. Uh, let me change it to cyclical. Cool. So I can do a lot more complicated motion studies too, like uh, check this one out here. I've done 
both the cylindrical joint for the tire and the frames revolute. So now you can see both the tire turning and the frame moving. Pretty cool. You can do this on any joint or any combination of joints that you want. So now let's go ahead and sculpt the seat. So I'll switch to the create form environment and I'm going to go ahead and create a quad ball on the area where the seat is supposed to go and I will locate it directly in front of the steering wheel which is easy to do using the view cube. And once I've got that I'm going to make it about a meter because that seems to be about the right size for a chair. Cool. So click OK. Um, and Yeah, there we go. So I, I actually can turn on symmetry here along the length, or I can get it back in this menu over here. If I want to get it through that menu, what I do is I click Mirror Internal Symmetry, and then just click the two faces that I want to be symmetrical, and the green line will be pop up between them. I have to do that before things are unsymmetrical, though. That's important to keep in mind. I can just highlight these faces now and go ahead and delete them to create a basic chair shape. So I'm actually going to model off of an image. So I will go to insert canvas and I found this image online of a razor chair. So I'm going to put it on the main frame and then drag it in position and scale it to size. Click display through, move it to where I want it. Cool. Okay. Nice. So. Now I can go ahead and get to modeling after I move the chair into position. So to start with, I'm actually going to make it a little bit skinnier. All right, so let's scale it. There we go, that's better. Um, now I'm going to go and I need to insert a few lines to get some more control points. So let's put that there. See, right along the middle, and I'm going to do both. And one in there, I can click OK. And now I've got a lot more control over the chair that I'm making. So while I'm doing some sculpt in the background, let's talk about some techniques. Uh, the biggest thing to remember is that faces make broad movements, and that lines are medium and vertexes make small changes. Also, if you want to add material, press the Alt key before using the grab handles. The grab handles allow for really fine control, just like you have with clay. Um, the arrows are 1D, boxes are kind of 2D movements, the dots are rotations, the lines are scaling, and that center point, that's a three-dimensional scale. So it allows for full control. And finally, the Modify menu has all of the other commands that you might need. If you need to add more lines, you can insert edges or use a subdivide. You can crease things to make them sharp rather than you know, organic and sculpted. The options are truly limitless. So now that I've got a body that I like, I can go ahead and thicken it. So modify, thicken, and this turns a surface model, which is what this chair is right now, into a three-dimensional solid body, which is important for modeling. So I'll change it to soft to keep it a nice organic shape. I'm going to move it so that I'm not hitting the um, frame anywhere. And I can go ahead and click Finish Form. Ah, okay, I have some intersecting sides. And looking closer, it does look like that side's pretty overlapping. So if I just click on that one face and move it up a bit, I can get it to stop intersecting. So this was a pretty easy fix. And cool, done. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and copy this and make two of them. I'll go ahead and copy, paste, and move it into position, then change it into a component, rename it. And next up, I'm going to switch into the render environment. So it comes in like this, and it looks pretty good, but it's not using the Fusion default materials, which can make it look even better. So to begin with, I'm going to bring up the Appearance menu, and I'm going to actually, if you've done something previously, you've got all of these generic things in there. So I can select which objects it's been applied to, and then just drag and drop my new material from Fusion into that area and everything updates. And I can right click and edit and change the color to whatever I want it to be and when I'm done um, it, it updates. So what's really cool about this is you can add carbon fiber, like we have so many materials in here that just render beautifully. Um, I mean, it's, it's super easy to do. And if you don't want to just do components up at the top, 
Um, you can either grab components like that or you can do faces. So I'm going to just drag and drop that rubber and you can see here the difference between the two materials there. You can even shift select multiple different areas and drag and drop the rubber on to one of them and have it apply to all. You can also use the browser for this. So I'm going to do this for the rest of everything and this is the final result. So when I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do a cloud rendering which will take about 10 minutes. Awesome. And once I hit start, eventually it will pop up down in the rendering gallery below. While we're waiting, I'll show you the simulation environment, which is new and pretty awesome. Simulation at this point has two different types of studies that you can do, a static stress and a modal frequency. So let's do a static stress. The first thing I need to do is turn off all of the components that I'm not going to study. I'm just going to do a study of the roll cage itself. So I'll turn that back on and I'm going to go ahead and put a structural constraint at the bottom to say that I want the bottom of this thing fixed in X, Y, and Z, i.e. to simulate just literally dropping it on the roof. Once I've got that constraint in place, I need to assign the force. And this I'm going to put on the roof, straight down on the top. And let's say I want this to be about uh, a thousand pound force. So once I put that in, I need to change the material. I don't want it to be steel. I want to do aluminum in this case. And I want to create a mesh. And we actually have a really cool adaptive mesh refinement tool that I love. It will be the default in the future. And it allows you to really get into those tight nooks and crannies and get a nice mesh, as you can see here. So when you're ready, you go ahead and click solve and it will create this. And if you look at it, it's a pretty well-made design. So the safety factor is quite high. Uh, the displacement's about where you'd think it would be, as is the stress. So let's let's vary it a bit. Let's create a really heavy force on the front to simulate maybe rolling over. Uh, let's do 10,000 pound force. That's a heck of an impact. And the new stress, oh yeah. Okay, so that's just the stress. And let's see, okay, there's the safety factor. So this will definitely start to crumple. Wow, quite a bit. Awesome. So that's the simulation tool. Play around with it. It's a lot of fun. The next thing I want to show you is the cam environment. Uh, we have a built-in CAD cam built on HSM Works, which is pretty cool. Once you have an item that you want to go ahead and cam, you have to set up the stock. And you can click just the model itself that you want to do it and then orient the axis, making sure that Z is up. And uh, once you've got that, you can play with it a bit. And the next thing you need to do is generate a tool path. So I like adaptive clearing, it works pretty well. Set my stock boundaries, choose my tool, in this case, quarter inch flat. And then I can go ahead and actually, once it's done generating the tool path, I can simulate that tool path and actually watch it cut away the stock. If it's going too slow, I can speed it up a bit. So this way you can, you can actually you know, use computer-aided manufacturing on the parts you've already designed. So uh, we also have a built-in platform for 3D printing called Spark. You can use a bunch of different tools, but uh, I like the Print Studio. And uh, once you pull something in, you can scale it to the right size, and then you can generate these custom supports, which are amazing. Then you can print just about anything. I've had incredible luck with overhangs. Finally, I want to show you the animation environment. So the animation environment allows you to use components and just kind of create a step-by-step -step video of how all your components come together. So this is just a quick and easy tool that allows you to show your designs quite well. And uh, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with this. So one of the easiest is to do uh, an auto explode, and this will show all, how all of your components come apart and then reassemble. And then you can select those and move them into position and then change the view screen. So at the end, you have a really cool video that really demonstrates how your design functions. The other thing that you can do with this is you can actually do an auto home. So once it's all come apart, you can bring it back together pretty easily. And it gives you a pretty nice looking final product. Alrighty, that's everything guys. I hope you enjoyed this little training video and you'll check out Fusion for more of the awesome things it can do. Take care and as always, let me know if you have any questions.